do you explore in your research? I'm Abdel Islam Badr and I am a social scientist. My field typically is a science policy in the field of gender, youth and migration. My name is Robert Lepenis and I'm a political scientist and a philosopher of social sciences. And I study how scientists and researchers try to bring evidence into policy. My name is Akihiro Kishimura. My research background is chemistry and now I have developed polymer nanomaterials, particularly for the drug delivery system and other kind of biomedical applications. Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm a political philosopher and that means that I think about how human beings live together in society and how we should structure the institutions of a just society. Hi, my name is Shima Tahiri, working on developing smart self-healing concrete structures. Hi, I'm Ibrahim Sid Zakir, assistant professor in statistics at Abu Mun University in Niger. I'm an ex einstein Forum ambassador and the national coordinator of the International Statistical Literacy Project. In my research, I usually explore high-dimensional statistical methods and tools. My name is Clarissa Rios Rojas and I work on policy making and I explore uh, the social and ethical aspects of human genomics. My name is Adewale Adewi. Um, I'm an industrial chemist. My research activities are based on industrial application of um, polymers, which cut across environmental studies, energy and food. How do you go about exploring it? Well, I, I look into society. I am an individual and I observe what's going on within my community and from there I collect my data and develop my project or research project in a way uh, or with the objective to develop some solutions that would answer the needs of those groups. I explore this by looking at the arguments that scientists make when they try to influence policy and how they organize in organizations. And I look at the organizations, I try to visit them. That's what I do. As philosophers, we read a lot of texts. We read past texts about how other thinkers have answered these questions. I also read a lot of social scientific research to understand the current challenges of society. And then it's really sitting down and thinking, writing, discussing with others, trying to see what the best reasons are that we have for doing things one way or another, to realize the values that we hold in our societies. I do um, a lot of lab research. Um, I, I'm um, at the moment uh, testing the sensors in the concrete structure to make it smart, to, uh, uh, to sense and also respond to the environment. And also I'm developing some uh, nanocapsules, uh, polymeric nanocapsules in the lab uh, to, uh, to work as a self-healing component of the concrete structure. For exploring it, I usually participate to our user group and online communities. What I usually do is to read a lot of papers, scientific papers. I also talk with policymakers. I talk with citizens because it's important to know what's their opinion about it. And I also read a lot of science fiction books. And I also watch movies. And I think that we can get inputs from everywhere. I explore my research uh, basically using applied science. I try to identify problems in the society and address them using applied science. For example, um, in the case of um, wastewater treatment, if um, there is pollution in river or any water system, what I do is I develop materials from biomass and I use them to treat such water to purify them. What is the impact of your research on society? My research is relevant to my society because um, it addresses societal issues. Like I told you earlier, water, environmental issues, corrosion control, food and energy. You know, basically looking at um, developing nations, one of the key problems presently is water. You know, the water, water is polluted. We have um, crises um, in different parts of Africa and um, we're looking for a way to treat them. So um, this is one of the things my research is addressing, to bring solutions to our present need, uh, precisely in Africa. My field of research is relevant because it brings together society, policy makers and what is good for the world. Bringing uh, sci scientists into uh, having an opinion about what uh, the, new, the new laws that are going to be implemented brings uh, a platform where we can have 
facts, research and information that is based on scientific re previous research and that can be used to take decisions for all the citizens in a country. In my opinion, my research is relevant to the society because I'm currently dealing with the sustainable development goals. So it's a global, it's, it's a global framework and we are contributing in a transdisciplinary teams and we are trying to make impact. Concrete is the second most used material on earth after water and everybody always forget that. It's the backbone of the society. You can look around and you see buildings, bridges, sewer pipelines, um, uh, everything here in our society is made of concrete. And any disaster actually is actually putting our life in danger. Imagine there is an earthquake, and if you can give the uh, building only two or three minutes more to stand up, uh, and then people evacuate, or if you can even give three minutes to a bridge until all the cars leave a bridge, that's how you can save life. I care about philosophy because I think that we need to question a lot of the assumptions that we carry around with us. And a lot of um, politics, a lot of public discourse just doesn't go deep enough thinking about what it is that we are really talking about. And that's what political philosophy can do for us. Think deeper about these questions that we all have in our minds that we talk about, but really sit down and try to think systematically about them. I think an important dynamic and a phenomenon that scientists need to take seriously is the way in which populists in policy, particularly right-wing populists, instrumentalize um, science and try to undermine science by giving uh, very simple answers to complex social questions. Now I think scientists must be wary not to go to the other extreme, and this extreme would be a technocratic approach to policy, which similarly often has only one solution to a complex problem. So, um, the question is, is there parts of science that is doubted for good reason? As scientists, you're not really sure what, where your research is going to lead you. And then sometimes you might end up somewhere where you didn't plan to. And what you have to do, you just implement the result you come up with, and then you see if they will like, yield any kind of fruitful impact on society. If not, then you just try again.